For the gospel today, I'm going to go off of uh, the script for All Saints Sunday, which is uh, Luke 6, which is the um, Beatitudes according to Luke. And I'm going to use the 20, 20th chapter of Luke, which is the assigned reading for the 20, uh, 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Seemed to me to be a better fit. So the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless, then the second And the third married her, and so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will she be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age... And in the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die any more, because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham and of uh, the God of Isaac and of the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him all of them were alive. Then some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well. For they no longer dared to ask him any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So today is All Saints Sunday. We, we call it All Saints Sunday, and we light candles to remember our loved ones and you don't have to be very old to have loved ones who we need to remember do you so all saints does anybody know what a saint is for all the saints what is a saint well i read this week a very short and interesting um, definition of what a saint is And a saint is someone, it is a person through whom God shines. Hmm. What might that have to do with all these candles? A saint is a person through whom God shines. Well, if we're remembering people who have died and gone to heaven, we're remembering people who we love, people who have shined in our lives, shined love, shined forgiveness, shined grace, shined all those things that God does for us, but that person did for us. So um, I thought a demonstration of that might be this. We take a black cloth representing the sin that we live with in this world. And what happens when I put my flashlight behind it? It shines what? It shines through it. Yeah, it shines light through the darkness, right? It shines light through the darkness. Isn't that cool? The light shines in the darkness, the Bible says, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Well, let's. Are you scared of the dark at night? Yeah, lots of people are. It's okay. You, yeah, yeah. We fold it over and the darkness gets even thicker, but what does the light do? It keeps shining through, doesn't it? Shall we try and fold it over as many times as we can before the, dark, the light doesn't shine through? That's twice. There's three times. Can you see the light? Okay. Well, this is probably where the where this analogy falls short because eventually, eventually. Oh, can you see it? Yeah. You can still see it, can't you? That's four times, just a little bit. Let's go six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, can you see it? No, no. So that, so that that's where this falls short. But um. If a saint is someone through whom the light of God shines, that means that you, you, children, you, 
You, you are saints. Did you know that? Did you know that you are a saint? You are. You're a saint. You're, you're a saint because the light of God can shine through you. How does that happen? When you share love. So let's say somebody's having a bad day and you give them a hug. Do you think that matters? Yeah, absolutely. That's like the light of God shining through. If, if, if somebody's discouraged and you speak to them a word of encouragement, do you think that matters? Yeah. If somebody, if somebody hurts you and you forgive them, do you think that matters? Yeah. Those are all things that God does for us and that we can do for others, right? So that's when the light shines through us. So let's come over here and let's pray. Evie, come over here. Come here. Come here. Let's pray. All right. Pray with me. You repeat after me. Dear Jesus, you are the light. Thank you for being bright, for bringing light into our darkness. Help us to shine, not our own light, but yours. Your love, your grace, your blessings, and to share them with others, to bring you glory. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You are saints. Do I have to get in your face too to get your attention? You are God's saints. <laughs> It was Easter, sun, Easter Sunday morning. The congregation had gathered for worship. The pastor had proclaimed the victory of God over sin and death. The tomb was empty. The service began and ended with the pastor proclaiming, Christ is risen, Alleluia, and the congregation responding, Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. At the entrance of the sanctuary, the pastor Following the service, the pastor was greeting the congregation. A woman whose husband had died less than a month earlier made her way to greet the pastor. Christ is risen, the pastor said, expecting the woman to reply, Christ, Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. The pastor was surprised when the woman, when the woman shook her finger in his face and said, and it had better be true. Christ has risen, and it had better be true. This woman had come to worship, seeking the assurance of life after death. She had come to worship to a place and to a place in her journey that she needed, that she needed to know that she could count on God. And God's promises. She needed to know that Christ had risen. And because he lives, we too shall live also. She needed that word of assurance. We too come to All Saints Sunday with that same need. As we remember and grieve and celebrate our loved ones who have gone before us, we come with that need for assurance, that need to know that we can stand on the promises of God. And I pray, my friends, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you find, that you find that assurance and that blessing today in God's Word. In Luke chapter 20, verses 27 through 38, the Sadducees, we're told, the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection come to Jesus with a, with a question that was meant to trap him. You see, Jesus had been proclaiming that the kingdom of heaven had come near. He has been proclaiming that the kingdom of God is so close that you can touch it. But it is a message that threatens their the Sadducees established power and it is a it is a proclamation that threatens the sin management system that benefited them 
that was set up in their favor to hold on to power and to keep people in, uh, in and under their influence. It was a system that they had set up not to get to heaven. Not to get to heaven, but to convince God to bless you, to bless us. Sacrifice this animal or sacrifice that animal and watch as God multiplies your family. Watch as God uh, multiplies your wealth and your place and position in society. You see, to die childless in the time of Jesus... And in the time of the Old Testament, it means that a man's name ends. It means that a man's name ends and that his, his legacy is no more. So when Jesus says there is a man who, or when the Pharisees bring this question to Jesus, there is a man who marries a woman but dies childless, that is the consequence of this of the scenario that they lay at Jesus' feet. And again, to die childless in Jesus' time or in Old Testament times means that, that the possibility of salvation has ended because salvation in their understanding, it was not about getting to heaven or resurrection. For again, they say there is no resurrection, but salvation is about the name. It's about the name of the man being carried on. It was a patriarchal society after all. It was about the name of the man being carried on. And for that reason, it's for that reason that sons, at least uh, that is one reason, that sons were so revered in that culture, in that society. In Psalm 127, we hear these words, Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward, like arrows in the hands of a, of a warrior. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior. What do arrows in the hands of the warrior do? They protect the warrior. They keep him alive. They keep him moving forward. They keep him conquering. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons in one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. It's not just a matter of happiness because of children. It is a matter of happiness and, and uh, exuberance because salvation will come through those sons. Lineage will be laid down and carried on. That name will be carried forward never to be forgotten. For to be forgotten in that culture was to be forgotten by God. And it's when this question is brought to Jesus, this question about this man who marries a woman, who marries seven brothers in order to carry on the family name, but none of them can make that happen. It's when this question comes to Jesus, whose wife, whose wife in the resurrection will she be? A resurrection that they don't believe in in the first place. It's when this question comes to Jesus that he sets the record straight. Salvation is not a matter of marrying, Jesus says, or being given in marriage. And therefore, it is not about even about bearing children. Salvation is a matter of God. Jesus says those who are considered worthy those who are considered worthy, worthy of a place in that age, in that age to come, in the, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage because they are like angels, Jesus says, and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. Jesus says that salvation has nothing to do with this world. It has nothing to do with marrying or being married, uh, being given in marriage. And it has nothing to do with bearing sons or children. It has nothing to do with your name at all. It has nothing to do with your name being carried forward. 
but it has everything to do with God. Resurrection is a matter of God. And that is good news. That is good news for you. It is good news for our loved ones whose names are on the list in our in our announcement sheet today and in our bulletin. It is good name, it is good news for those who you bear in your heart. And those who you carry in your mind. Now it is bad news for those trying to protect protect their sin management system and their personal power. It's bad news for those who are trying to make a name for themselves. Salvation and life are a gift, my friends. They are a gift from God for the people of God. Those who by grace are children of God. God has been in this salvation and resurrection business for a long, long time. If you remember, God called Abraham and Sarah... He called them from their pagan ways and made them a great nation, giving them just one child. Just one child, lest, uh, in fact, one child that came long after their childbearing years. And he yet, God, made of them a great nation, giving them that one child, lest anyone think that it was by their own fertility that the promise was fulfilled. God saved Isaac from the knife of sacrifice there on the mountain when his father Abraham followed the direction of God to take Isaac up the mountain and sacrifice him. God saved Isaac from the knife by providing a ram that was caught in the thicket. That is salvation. God saved Jacob. He saved Jacob's life from the the wreckage of his own selfishness and his own cheating ways, which is what his name means, from his own cheating ways to bring forth a nation blessed to be a blessing. And over and over again, God forgave and restored that people, the people of Israel, to bring forth God's own Son, Jesus Christ, so that all might have life in Him. Salvation and resurrection, well, that is, it is about a son, but not your son or mine or anyone's son except God's. In baptism, God connects us. God connects us with Jesus in a death like His so that we will also be, so that our loved ones will also be connected with Jesus in a resurrection like His. And that is a promise on which we can stand. It is a promise on which we can build our lives. It is a promise on which, in which we can trust. Dear friends, come to the water again this day. Come to the water. With the water and God's Word, we are given new life. We are, res- we are given the resurrected life. And that is not something that we have to wait for until we die. We can have it today and tomorrow and the next day and every day in Jesus Christ. Paul gets that in Ephesians chapter 1. He writes, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, so that with the eyes of your uh, your heart enlightened, with the light of Christ shining into and through your heart, you may know. What is the hope to which He has called you? What are the riches of His glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the, uh, what is the immeasurable greatness of His power for us who believe 
who trust according to the working of the, His great power. God put his, work, his, put his power to work in Christ, Paul says, when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at, the right, at His right hand in the heavenly places. For above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name, that is named not only in this age, but in the age to come. Above every name that is named. Salvation isn't about your name or mine. It's an act of God. It's an act of grace. It's about a promise. A promise made and a promise kept. And it's about the name of Jesus. And it's through that name that we know that we can be absolutely confident, that we can be absolutely assured that it is true. Jesus' name means He will save His people from their sins. He will save. He will give life and resurrection and victory through His name alone. And for the second week in a row, I'll end the sermon today with the words of Martin Luther, the words of our catechism. This is most certainly, this is most certainly true. Let all God's people say, Amen.